Hi, my name is Tanya and I'm a Sowahawk. Welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's so time to you. I am filming today my, um, let me think, April sewing mix. And I think this will be the biggest sewing mix video I have done in my a bit over a year YouTube career because here are a lot of pieces. Um, that's also why I decided to um, not go too much into depth about the different um, garments or um, accessories that I made because if I would do that I think we would be here for a few hours um, and I think you don't have time for that so I will um, only tell you the most important details but yes I had quite a lot of time for sewing in April and I really enjoyed it I really made some amazing pieces that I love there is maybe one maybe two pieces that I am not so fond of but all in all I think um, it was a very successful sewing month and I really really enjoyed um, taking my time to make all of these garments and there are also two um, sewing patterns for my cottage core living um, pattern company included in this whole not whole in my mix <laughs> um, yeah and I think I will just jump right in and start with the first um, pattern that I also published on Cottage Core Living Co. as I said and I will link as always everything down below also my own patterns but also the patterns um, and the fabrics if I can find them for all the things that I made. And this one here is my or was my very first make of the month and it is um, the Myosotis quilted bag that I made the pattern for and this pattern is also available in my um, in my Etsy pattern store as I said it has these short handles and then it also has long um, straps or handles so you can wear it um, on your shoulder like this and um, yeah you can just whatever or whichever straps you want to wear you can put the other ones inside of the bag or just let them hanging out it is a very very roomy tote bag so you can fit a lot in here and um, it doesn't have any pockets inside it is just a very simple bag and you also get the instructions to do the quilting on your own but you can of course also buy pre-quilted fabric for this bag and i really really like it this is my second version and um I will probably ask my mom if she wants to have this one because I don't need two quilted tote bags. But yeah, I'm super pleased with this one and it is uh, made from quilting fabrics from just my local fabric store. And then the second mix of the month were, oh, we're joined by my cat if you can see her here is a sports set i am um, doing quite a lot of sports at the moment i'm going um, not really rock climbing but bouldering so inside a climbing um, hall arena don't know what to call it um, i do that i do yoga at home but also in a studio then i go horse riding and i go running also again so i decided i want to have some more sports um, garments and i wanted to make a set for myself and i got this very cool leopard um, what is it called lycra or sportswear swimwear fabric um, also at a store near me and um, i decided to make myself just a very standard pair of leggings 
And this is a pattern from um, Stoff and Steel. They are now called Self Made. And I got it in Munich when I still lived there at their store there. So it is not really an athleisure pattern, it is just a box standard pair of leggings. And honestly, it is probably not the best pattern to make for sports because they when i do yoga for example they slide down a bit which is not ideal but i think for running it um, will be completely fine and yeah they're just a normal pair of leggings and i will insert pictures everywhere i have to take a lot of pictures after filming this so you can see the outfits on me and then I wanted to have a kind of top or sports bra or whatever to go with the leggings. And I just self-drafted this um, little bralette or crop top, maybe. Um, yeah, from, and I made this, or I made something like this before, two years ago, I think, from just leftover black jersey. And I really like wearing it as a crop top. And yeah, I just, um, did the same again it's just rectangles and then it was quite short so i decided to or my boyfriend suggested which was very very um smart of him to add a little like handband here almost like you would do for a sweatshirt for example and that added a bit of length and also security um yeah maybe not the most supportive top and i could have made the straps a bit shorter but it was kind of a test run and um, I will just wear it for doing yoga at home. I wore it once to the yoga studio and it was not the best outfit to wear because I had to pull um, all the time so that I wouldn't flash anything which is not ideal um, but for working out at home this is fine and also I definitely have to try um, running in this because I think for that it would also be okay. Yeah, so a very nice little leopard sporty set. Okay, okay. Then on to very two very basic makes, and these are probably the ones I have worn most this month, which tells me um, that I wear a lot of basics, um, and I should probably make more basics. But it's just not the most fun to make basics, you know. Um, it's the funky colorful fabrics that are much more um, interesting to make up but I made the Erica T by Fiber Mood from the Essentials issue and it is in the magazine it is made from a um, linen viscose jersey and I wanted to do the same because I thought uh, the fabric combination or the linen in a jersey is very interesting and um, probably also very, very comfortable to wear. And I was right. I ordered one meter from a um, Austrian online fabric store um, of the black and one meter of the white. And I made the smallest size um, in the Erika, which was the, the size XS, I think. And yeah, I now have two very basic t-shirts. It is a very boxy fit, um, quite long um, short sleeves. And also the, the body is quite long of the t-shirts. I like to tuck my t-shirts in. I could probably shorten it a bit, um, but if you would wear it over leggings, for example, then you would almost be covered, your bum would almost be covered, I think, which is also nice. And I have washed both of, both of these already and the fabric still looks like new. And yeah, it's just very simple, a bit boring mix. But um, these are definitely staples in my wardrobe. And the linen jersey is amazing. So not sure if I needed um, more t-shirts in more colorful um versions probably not because i thought about um ordering for example a red linen viscose jersey but honestly i think black and white is more than enough and 
then I can make a few more Mayo t-shirts, for example, or the spring in London, the off-the-shoulder t-shirt. Um, yeah, I, I think for now, the Erika is my basic t-shirt pattern to go now, but I won't need any more at the moment. And then on to, I think this is my favorite make of the month, and it is the Daphne Shawl Collar Jacket by a pattern company, which I can't remember, Vivian Cho or something like that. I'm very sorry, but I will link everything down below. I found this pattern on the fold line. I was searching for a shawl collar jacket, um, a very simple one, and I found this one and I love it. Um, the fabric I used for the outside is a Chakar fabric I got from Pigeon Wishes at the Stitch Festival and it has all these zebras and tigers all over it and I think, maybe you can see it better in the back actually, I think this is just amazing. I love the, the combination of the black, white and the yellow and then you can see a bit of the pink um, for the tongue of the tiger and I, uh, I think it is just the most fun fabric and it is the perfect jacket to wear with a very basic outfit for example um, one of these t-shirts and then a pair of jeans and then this jacket is the statement and that's probably the kind of outfit I enjoy wearing most um, just trousers or jeans with a t-shirt and a statement jacket or CLA like today um, yeah, and I have worn this already quite a few times. Also, um, one time I wore it with a more um, dressed up um, outfit where I wore, I think, white jeans and a fancy um, jersey top. And then I wore it just with a, a leisure look and leggings and a t-shirt. And I felt very, very nice. Every time I wore it, it has patch pockets here. There are different um, pocket options for this pattern, but I opted for the patch pockets here. And then I also lined the jacket with a pre-quilted fabric. And I used two different fabrics. One that I also got from the Stitch Festival from Trend Patterns, which is the matte one here. And then I didn't have enough left. So I went to my local fabric store and just bought a standard um, lining quilted lining and yeah it is very cozy because of the lining it is very 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 nice and also the perfect spring or transitional season jacket i roll the the sleeves up a bit and yeah it was it came together super super easily so a very very nice pattern that i can highly recommend and if I have or find, um, for example, a quilted um, fabric one day, I will also think about making this jacket again. You don't have to line it, by the way, that was just, that is optional. And I decided to do it because I want to add warmth, but you can also just bind it. And um, that is also described in the pattern. So definitely a firm favorite, this one. And by the way, the um, things I made are not in the order I made them here on the hanger. It was just the first few pieces that actually were. But now on to the make that I'm not so sure about. And I told you about this in one of my Sunday sewing catch-ups. And at the time I was very happy with it, but I'm not so sure anymore. I couldn't actually wear it. Um, so. I don't really, I couldn't really test the wearability. Um, let's put it that way. This is a dupe of the Gunny blouse um, that is everywhere. And one evening, I, I was not really into it um, at all at first. One evening, I saw a leopard version and I fell in love. And for whatever reason, I then decided to go through my stash and search for a fabric to make the blouse out of which was not a leopard because i think if i would have done this in a leopard print fabric i would have liked it but i didn't have a 
leopard, uh, a suitable leopard fabric in my stash. So I went for this gorgeous broidery anglaise, I think it is, green fabric that I got from Abacan Fabrics um, quite some time ago. And I used the Anthea blouse by Anna Allen as a base and then just did, yeah, the, the regular um, alterations you would do for making a tie front and adding the ruffle at the bottom. But it is a bit almost too boxy, I think. And also, I'm not sure if the color green, I love the color, but if this really suits me, not so sure. I would originally have liked to make a, a skirt out of this fabric and maybe that would have been the, the better option, honestly. But yeah, it was just a bit too cold at the moment and I didn't really have the opportunity to wear it. So I can't really tell you if it is something that I will wear regularly, but I honestly doubt it, which is a bit sad because I love the fabric. Um, by the way, that's it in the back. But yeah, I mean, it's okay. We all have those makes that we are not so sure about. And this is mine and that's okay. And I could just about fit it out of one meter, which was very good. And if I come across a nice, maybe cotton poplin or cotton wall in a leopard print, I will probably try making the blouse again. Um, but maybe I should test if I wear this one before, who knows? But yeah, that was not a fail, but it is not my favorite piece this month. And then I think um, I will just go slightly off order here because I entered the So April Blouse 24 challenge this year and I made a Marnie blouse by Tilly and the Buttons in um, the smallest size out of this gorgeous viscose twill western boot, cowboy boot um, fabric that I got at the Stitch Festival also from Rainbow Fabrics. And I used a bit of um, leopard print binding here for the neckline. And um, you will have maybe seen it on my Instagram. I made this for horse riding because I am now um, riding Western. I was riding English before, but now I switched to Western, which I prefer. And I got myself a pair of Western boots, riding boots. And they look very similar to the boots on this blouse. And I now wore this one to horse riding. Hey, Yumi, what is she doing? You're such a sweet. Um, yeah, and I entered this, as I said, into the challenge. And um, I really, really like it. And I will probably wear it outside horse riding um, also. And then the I think on the Marnie blouse it says you will need two and a half meters of fabric, I think. Um, and I got two meters um, at the Stitch Festival. And then I still had quite a lot of fabric left. I think around 70 centimeters for sure. And um, I mean, I maybe have to add, I don't do any ruffles or any pin tucks. That's just not my style. So I make the simplest version of the Marnie. And then I had some fabric left and I saw um, on Sarah's from, so Sarah Styles um, YouTube channel that she made the Naya t-shirt by Tammy Handmade out of a woven viscose fabric, I think it was. And I tried to fit my pattern pieces onto the rest of this fabric and it worked. And now I have a short sleeved riding top as well. And I also wore this for horse riding already. And honestly, it was the best t-shirt I wore for horse riding ever. It was quite a hot day and it was a bit windy and the fabric was just super lightweight and breathable. And it was just the perfect top. And I felt very good in it as well. 
and um, yeah what I did is just add a bit of um, navy ribbing here but the rest of the top is just the woven fabric and I will definitely make more um, woven nayas with leftover fabrics but also with fabrics where I just don't want to spend a lot of money on um, because I only need 70 centimeters for it and then I will have some blousey summer tops so that was one of my surprising successful makes of April definitely and I make I think I make these size 10 um, in the Naya because I want it to fit a bit oversized okay then on to one of the also surprising <laughs> makes of the month and this is the hazel dress by Veronica Tucker I got this pattern at the stitch festival at the fabric godmother um, stall and this fabric is a viscose shelly from Peso sister that I bought in Edinburgh last year and I was not sure what to make with it so I decided to make a kind of a wearable twirl in the or from the hazel dress and it turned out much better than I expected the hazel pattern is such a beautiful and very very flowy um, dress very breathable um, very yeah just very very flowy it has a lot of gathers very big pattern pieces you need three meters at least for this pattern very very nice sleeves and then it has this yoke detail in the front with a tie and also the yoke detail in the back and yeah I just really like this style of dress I wore it once on a warm day I had to wear um, some nude biker shorts underneath because it when the wind um, came it just was um, it was just um, flattering away no I don't know I think you know what I mean um, sometimes I'm just my, the English words are not coming to mind to my mind but yeah it is just a very very flowy um, breathable type of dress and also I quite like the colors of this one on me and I um, thought that the pattern was a bit too the pattern or the print of the dress was a bit too um, bold and yeah just a bit too bold maybe but when I wear it I feel really good in it so that's definitely a win and I really like the tie in the front and um, I will definitely make the hazel dress again I just need to buy a fabric um, or I just need to buy three meters of a fabric which is quite a lot for me I normally only buy about two and a half meters but a very very good dress for spring summer and then I finished um, a pajama set that I started in March and this one is a new look pattern that I will link down below also which is my um, standard pattern for pajama bottoms and I made it from a cotton wall from the clearance section on the new craft house website it is super super thin lightweight perfect for summer and hot spring days but a bit too cold right now um, yeah but it is just a very very cute pair of pajama bottoms I think it has deep pockets I added a little um, velvet ribbon here and yeah just long wide legs and I made a matching um, like a vest top in a white jersey for this one so that's probably one of the most boring makes of the month these pajama bottoms we're almost through this is my second um, own pattern of April that I also released in April and this is the sunflower skirt by cottagecore living 
it is the first garment that I released and it is also as all my other patterns or not all of them but almost all of them it is a drafted yourself um, pattern you will um, take your waist measurement for this one and then with the help of my uh, calculation instructions you will calculate all the pieces which are only rectangles it has it has um, three tiers, one, two, three, and then the waistband is attached to the first tier. Um, yeah, you will calculate the, the pattern pieces yourself, but it is super easy. I also did a little example in the instructions, so that shouldn't be a problem at all. And if you have any problems, just um, DM me and I will help you. It has quite a um, deep, waistband so you will insert a five centimeter wide elastic and yeah it is the same um, in the back and it is made or my version is made from a very nice rainbow gingham that is quite heavyweight and i think it is a poly cotton mix or something maybe also a bit of viscose i don't know um, and i got this at the i think what is this store called? It was one that Rachel from the French Seams um, recommended to me when, in Dublin, when I was in Dublin. Um, something with counter? The fabric counter, I think it was, yes. And um, I got the fabric there. And I am very pleased with the skirt. It is super cute, perfect, worn with a black t-shirt or a colorful t-shirt or a blouse or something so very very nice and if you're interested then please go ahead and check out the sunflower skirt pattern on my etsy shop as well okay and then finally on to the last make of the month which was um, literally finished on the 30th of april i think and it is another veronica tucker pattern um, but this time it is the Hera pattern. And this is either a set or a dress or a detachable dress set, which is the version that I made. This one is the crop top. Um, and it is, I think normally this would be the front. So this side would be the front. And in the back, it has a very nice deep, keyhole detail with um, long straps but you can also wear this part on the front so yeah it is very very versatile this pattern then it has these big pu big puffy sleeves that are lined um, and very very yeah very very poofy and puffy <laughs> and then you can make a skirt a matching skirt for this one which is a i would say a medaxi skirt maybe um, it has also an elasticated waistband and then it goes the first tier is a bit like it goes up and then at the back it goes down so i don't know i'm not explaining that very well but you can probably see and then it goes into a quite a long um, skirt and has kind of a high low um, detail from just because you are using this pattern piece in the front which is higher and then the one in the back which is lower and um, yeah it is also a very very nice skirt and what you can do is Make this as a dress also, but also as a detachable dress. And then you just add this little panel inside and you add these um, hooks here. And then in the top part of the garment or the dress set, you add the other part of the hooks. Sorry, I hope you can see that here. It's not so easy showing you this. Yeah and then you just attach them and it is then here in the front at the waist it is attached and i think that is a very nice look i um tried attaching the two pieces and 
the thing is the skirt has a lot of fabric in it so it is quite heavy and it pulls the fastening down in my case at least and then you can see the little the little panel that you made here for the skirt which is not ideal um, I think for what I wanted so I'm thinking about um, trying to wear it like this a few more times and if I don't like it just attach the skirt to the top in the front where you would normally hook them together so it is the same look but it is a dress stand I couldn't wear it as a, sep a separate stand but honestly um, I wanted to have a dress anyways so I think that would be fine the fabric as you can probably see is a double gauze um, a very nice sagey green color I got from my local store again and I bought four meters and in the end I used about three and a half I would say um, but just because I um, drafted the second tier of the skirt myself and it is narrower I think than the original one in the pattern would be but as a set um, I got a lot of compliments on Instagram and also um, in real life and as I said it is super cute I think and the fabric makes it very very nice to wear as well but I will probably wear it more as a dress than as a set but I think I will um, test that not that I attach both of them and then I decide I would like I would have liked to wear it as a set and then it's too late if you know what I mean that's a bit um, complicated I think but that's my thought process yeah okay that was everything I made in April so quite a lot of garments and except maybe for the green blouse I am super happy with all of them and I'm very sure that they will get a lot of wear which is also um, my intention for my makes this year I am currently um, evaluating my wardrobe and what I wear and what I don't wear and try to make more of the stuff that I do wear which of course makes sense but in April I think that worked quite well and I am super pleased and um, yeah I hope you enjoyed this video let me know in the comments down below how your April um, was in terms of sewing and if you have any questions then please let me know if you have any favorites please also let me know and if you want to see more of me then please subscribe and give this video a like take care guys bye yeah.